Hello, hello. My name is Jonathan Morgan, and I use technology and data for social good. So this means I work a lot with humanitarian data, which, because it's a little bit difficult to come by, is not always the most useful. OK, it sucks, right? And the problem with humanitarian data is that it's, it's never available, right? So we need this event data. So event data uh, means that it's a thing that happens at a place. And so we're looking for what and where and when. And um, the, this is pretty easy, right? But the, the, the challenging thing about this is that most event data right now is collected by government agencies and NGOs. And these guys maybe produce data a couple weeks or a couple months after a disaster or crisis occurs, and it's ultimately, um, uh, they, they hold on to it. They don't share it. And so people like me have been looking for other sources of information, like social media, for example. And the interesting thing about social media is that it's people who are either victims or a disaster or even participants in a conflict that can share what's going on around them. The problem is that unlike this highly curated, very precise event data collected by NGOs, it's really messy. So it's sort of like um, if you were to uh, look for crisis data in all of the like 50 million Facebook pages and billions and billions of pieces of content, it's like wandering around Damascus, you know, hoping that you bump into somebody who might be an informant, right? Needles in a, in a very, very, very big haystack. So Fortunately for us at CrisisNet, we met this guy named Brown Moses, and his real name is Elliot Higgins. And the cool thing that Elliot discovered was that um, rebels, um, uh, militant groups, and even terrorist organizations are using Facebook pages and YouTube channels for self-promotion. You know, just like everybody else, right? And Elliot found that if you examine this content, if you read it, you can prove conclusively before media organizations and even before government intelligence agencies where chemical weapons attacks will happen in Syria, which is like mind-blowing that this is on Facebook, right? The problem is, is that this data is difficult to consume. Thousands of Facebook pages, thousands of YouTube channels is too much content for one person to read in a single day. It doesn't scale to other conflicts. So when Elliot and I met, we talked about a platform that I've been developing that can consume crisis data from sources all over the internet into something that's easier to use and digest. Because at Ushahidi, where, you, uh, where Woody and I work, um, we, have this, um, we have this vision, right? where you can take this huge mess of humanitarian data that's available in the world, put it in one place, and while it's there, extract interesting information out of it, right? Like the names of people, uh, the names of places, so that you can get closer to this what, where, when data that we all know is important in this type of situation. So. Um, once you have this information, it can be public, um, and it can be a tool that empowers makers like developers and data journalists to do something more useful with crisis data. So Elliot tells us the Facebook pages and the YouTube channels that, we're mo that he's monitoring, and we take a look and we find that the conflict really is atrocious, right? But when you're working with humanitarian data, it's important not just to make tragedy porn, right? You got to do something useful. You have to extract some knowledge from this information. So we put it on a map. Um, and we hoped that we could use this Facebook and YouTube data to locate where the conflict in Syria was occurring. So, um, the, uh, so we did that. <laughs> and um, as a sanity check, we compared our map with one that was created using event data collected by NGOs working on the ground. And it turns out they were pretty similar, right? So the, the data that I collected using our system from my house in Austin actually approximates what's happening on the ground in Syria. Um, this is awesome. So we start to ask other questions, like what else can we answer? Can we look for barrel bombs? And barrel bombs are important because in Syria, these are um, improvised explosive devices that are often used to disseminate chemical weapons, which are appalling. So we pull the data into our system. We look for keywords like barrel bombs that we've extracted. We compare that with the names of places and locations, and it turns out that we can show where and when these bombs were falling using reports that were given to us by people who were affected by the actual attacks. So cool. So now what, right? With this room full of smart people, there's me and another guy at Ushahidi that are working on this big crisis data platform. And so what I'd like to ask you guys is, or what I'd like to suggest to you guys is that there are ways that you can get involved to help. So if you're a maker, there's lots of data available for you to play with. You can make applications. You can make visualizations. If you are a developer, this is an open source platform. All our components are open source. It's early in the project. You can have a huge impact. Or you can advocate. This kind of open data that's being collected shouldn't be closed. It should be open. Humanitarian data is a basic human right. So let's go do that. Let's make it happen. And let's be awesome. Thanks. <laughs>